Yo, 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 all right, welcome to episode 76 of the MKU podcast on the MKU network. This your man, Zan P. Age is in the building with me. Hey. Reggie back on the road. He'll be back next week. You know what I'm saying? Reggie, Reggie, you gotta, you gotta move that work, um, which is the cars that he's moving and shit. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> Reggie out here moving cars like a motherfucker, man. So shout out to my nigga. Matter of fact, giving that nigga an applause, man. A lot of people are happy he came back, too. Had a lot of great, like. It was nice to have Yeah, a lot, a lot of great things about that shit, too. Um, a lot of great things about that. So, uh, yeah, man. So, what's been going on with you, man? How was your week been? It's been a fucking blur, to be honest with you. Yeah. Uh, just working, just working. Same, same. Nah, my shit been kind of crazy, man. Uh, shout out to uh the newest member of MKU, Ken Brass, aka the Brass Hole. Shout out to that man. Okay. Yeah, we um. We shot our trailer for our podcast, The Potters of Destiny, the new wrestling podcast. Um, I like the logo. Did you go with that one logo? Yep, the first one. Yeah, we went with that one. So, uh, Corey, Corey shot the uh, Corey was out there yesterday with me. Um, he was shoot, he shot the uh, trailer for me. My brother pulled up in that King Daytona. They only made three hundred of them bitches, so he pulled up in that shit. Uh, my nigga shot up my nigga Polo two times pulling up. My nigga, okay. My nigga blacking out with black pulled up. <laughs> and Stack pulled up. Uh, they 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 in the they in the trailer too. Niggas uh niggas high as hell and shit, man. I was I was high too. I ain't gonna lie to you, man. So you know when you when you when you what watch this. You going on a fucking uh a detox. I did. I, that was my first time smoking in a minute. So <laughs> so. Since when, nigga? About three weeks. Three weeks to a month. Okay. And I ain't smoked too much. You know what I'm saying? I just hit hit the blood a couple times. and That was really it. Um, and that's why I got high like that. And then um, <laughs> we had some uh. <laughs> Here, Corey gave me a bottle of gin, some purple gin, Empress gin. I, I, we did Polo and uh, Polo and his lovely wife uh, was drinking that shit too. <laughs> but no, nah, we we shot that shit yesterday. Uh, it was funny too, man. I ain't gonna I ain't gonna say I ain't gonna say on air, but Corey seen some shit. He's like, "What the fuck?" I'm like, "Yeah, nigga." So uh, we was on Schoolcraft with it, man. Uh, felt good to be back over there. We shot that shit, man. We gonna drop it and um shit. Since we still here. Since I mean, I'm saying when we drop this shit, mm-hmm. drop this episode, everybody gonna know what's going on anyway. But you know, um, August third, man, at the uh, Sports and Social Bar, uh, presented by Giraffe Kings, that bar in Troy, we are doing a SummerSlam watch along party. We got a DJ pulling up. We got photographers gonna be in there. Um, crack, crack, gonna be doing some camera work in there too. We got the we got the um, happy hour extended. Um, so you know, just pull up, man. Come watch some wrestling with us and shit like that, man. You know, kick it. Check out, check out the bar and all that. Even got they even got a beer pong table in there. Yeah, I'm gonna be there. Yeah, <laughs> even got that in there too. So you know what I'm saying. Uh, and basically, what we doing for this wrestling shit, man? We not gatekeeping shit. We not gonna be like you got you got to be current up with the certain current current wrestling and all that other shit. Nah, man, we ain't no nerd ass niggas, man. Um, <laughs> what the fuck? Nah, you just you know what I'm saying. That's that elitist bullshit, man. I'm not. I'm never for that, man. Like I'm not no gatekeeping ass niggas. So if you want to watch wrestling, with us come watch wrestling. If you feel casual, cool. You want to talk about the old school shit? Cool. If you want to talk about, you know what I'm saying, anything, if you want to talk about anything in wrestling, like, just come fuck with us, man. Like, we not, I'm not that type of nigga. Never have been, never will be. Yeah, I don't think you're like that. Yeah, and I just, I don't know, I just, I just think it's corny, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I just think it's real corny for, um, for just for that shit, but it is what it is, man. Uh, people get mad about what I say, I don't give a fuck. Y'all, y'all get mad about everything. Facts. <laughs> y'all niggas, y'all niggas are never happy. Everything. Y'all are never happy. Nobody happy. Me. No, it, it's not. It's just and that, and that, and that's and that's crazy. Like nigga, like you know, and I and I, and I kind of felt myself falling into that trap too. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to Teddy. I was talking to him earlier today, and he was just saying like, bro, we not having fun no more. I'm like you're right. Like everything is so yeah. everything is so fucking serious now, man. It like, is. and I'm like, yeah, I got to change that. So we shot that video yesterday. I was I was goofy as hell in that bitch. You know, but it was fun though. I had fun doing that shit. That's the important part. Yeah, and like we not having fun no more. Even we, even even for a minute, we wasn't having fun doing this podcast. Mm-hmm. We were just knocking episodes out and just going on about our business and shit. And fucking like autopilot. Yeah, autopilot. And it's just like, like nah, we can't do that. Like I even did a game show in so fucking long, man. Yeah. Yeah, and I gotta change that shit. Like we just haven't. You know what I'm saying? Just been so much, 
So much drama, man. So much bullshit. It's a lot of pressure. A lot of pressure and everything too, man. But you know it is what it is, man. So no, nah, we no, nah, you know what I'm saying? I'm back in it. <laughs> I got my smile back. <laughs> but, uh, what is wrong with you? <laughs> <laughs> you are so ears. <laughs> oh man, that's funny. Uh yeah, so we back, man. We got some topics in this motherfucker real quick, man. What we got today, man? Um oh also too, man. Ooh, somebody else supposed to fucking shout out. Uh shout 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 to A Train, dog. I was talking to A Train earlier, man. Mm-hmm. You know, so happy birthday to his lovely wife, April. Happy mm-hmm. birthday to you. Happy birthday. Yeah, so you know, she um uh, you know, man, he was just telling me and shit, man. You know, he got him a new job and everything. He's he's a lot he's a lot happier. And then me and this nigga just having conversations and shit, man. And this old I, I call that nigga the Vin Diesel of Detroit. No, no, he's not Vin Diesel. That's my nigga Tony. Tony Riley, that nigga Vin Diesel. Okay. Cause that nigga be fixing on everything. Okay. No, a train is just <laughs> Oh. Hold up. Mm-hmm. We got some breaking news. What's the breaking news? Joe Biden has withdrawn from the U.S. presidential race. Oh, Jesus Christ. Yeah. All right. So we here. Hey. Okay. <laughs> we are here. Um. All right. So how you feel about that? I mean, I don't want people to get this confused. I'm not. I'm just a Republican. I'm not necessarily a pro-Trump Republican I like things about both candidates. However, um, he needed to drop out. I don't care who you put in there, but he needed to go. I'm gonna tell you right now, this was Trump. This was Trump's worst thing to happen for him to drop out. Why? You think somebody worthy could be his opponent now? Yep, I think that's what's going to end up happening, and um, they probably gonna end up pushing Kamala up there. It's not gonna happen. I uh, they think they want to end up put no I, you know it just, this is this is what I've been hearing I hope to God it don't happen what they talking about Hillary might take his spot hell no nah. if they put Hillary up there it's a wrap Hillary says she's not running ever again it's a wrap Hillary runs oh positive it's a wrap it's a shoe in it's a shoe in you talk about a landslide because niggas at this point is voting for Trump because they don't know who else to fuck the vote and a lot of niggas not voting at all because they don't know who to fuck the vote for. Yeah, so I don't know who, I, like, I don't know who's going to be, like, the next candidate. I know Kamala will probably fuck both of them up in the debate. Especially, the, the, especially that, especially. I'm telling you, she going to get the fucking snapping that. Yeah, especially that young guy, too, that, that young guy, which, which is, and how do you feel about that? Uh, Trump picked him. I think that was stupid. I think that was real stupid. To be honest with you, I think it was one of those, I fuck with people that like me. hmm And. I feel like that was the only nigga that didn't hate him right now. Even though he had some shit, he compared Trump to Hitler and all his other shit, man. So that don't look good. Yeah, it don't. Yeah, so. I don't know. I think with them getting rid of they, with Biden stepping down, that's. It could be a good or bad thing. It, yeah, it, yeah, it could be. It depends on who they're going to have to replace him. Oh. That's the thing. And like, I don't know about that. I hope it's not some. Uh, Win by default type shit. <laughs> <laughs> and this is where they fucked. They should have been. Honestly, they should have been did this shit. They, they waited. Really they waited too long for this. They wait. I mean, at, so right now, you know, if you are a registered voter, all the absentee ballots are out. Mm-hmm. So it's like I think niggas got like maybe what another month, maybe a few weeks to turn in like their absentee ballots. So if like niggas can't even vote or get out to vote, now it's like okay. Now I got to figure out, I, I'm going to just go ahead and say I'm going to vote. Get me my absentee ballot. And it's like, who the fuck you going to put on this ballot before that shit closes? They got to figure, they got to find a replacement quick. Like, they announced that today, by the time we dropped this episode, they should already had a, they should already had a replacement. I hope so. That's, I, they bet. It's like, I they, assume, well, I don't know. I don't know how, how fast those absentee ballots get sent out to the house. But it's just like, y'all got to have this shit wrapped up soon. This is goofy. Yeah, y'all this wait. is July. The yeah. election is in four months. Yeah, it's stupid. It's dumb. And they about to be pressuring people to do that shit like... Less than four months. Yeah, they might be trying to pressure people to get them absentee ballots in there. That's going to be... that. It's going to be... It's going to be... It's going to be tough. It's going to be tough, man. So... Ooh, hey, they did what they had to do, man. Because this motherfucker's up there saying the dumbest shit ever, man. Like, they knew Biden was... He, he wasn't all... He wasn't all the way there. 
No. He wasn't all the way there. You had to get him the fuck up out of there. Trump, Trump up there is sharp, kind of. You know what I'm saying? Um, kind of. Yeah, that new guy, he's probably going to get ate up in that debate. Um, he's going to get ate up in the, in the vice president debate. So, And Kamala going to destroy Trump in the debate. Yeah. yeah she's going to destroy him. Yeah. So. I can't wait to see what happens. I'm excited. We in a shit show. It is a shit we in, show. We in a big, I big shit show. I do miss politics being entertaining, though. I'm not going <laughs> to lie. It's just. Because it's very, like, I think the first time politics became entertaining was you know Obama was in office. Yeah, you know Obama was slick. Obama was slick, yeah, slicker than a can of oil, man. Let's say Twitter account like we weren't used to that shit. Yeah, Obama was up there slicker than a can of oil you know, in the debates and shit. Something to look at, and it's like now it's like then Trump got in office and this shit turned into a whole Saturday Night Live 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 event, man. Turned, yeah, man, so man like, motherfuckers, we going to work like motherfuckers talking about some. You fuck with Trump, you fuck with us. You know, that shit. <laughs> I'm not gonna say what That's I want. Not I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna say what I want to say for, about dog because of you know your affiliation and shit. So I'm gonna keep my mouth shut. On oh that. my god, mm. I don't have no affiliations. I am not a gang member. Yeah, okay. <laughs> at least you. At least you can admit that. Yeah, <laughs> I sure can. <laughs> Let me stop, man. It's whatever. But yeah, um, you know what I'm saying? Like it's it. I mean, shit. Hey, man, we 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 in a, we, we, we the second half of the year is gonna be fucking ridiculous. Idiot. It's gonna be stupid as fuck, man. So Let's strap in. <sighs> God, man. All right. Well, uh, so, you know what I'm saying. Salute to uh, if I had that shit, man. Doo, 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 if I had that, I, I'd have played that, but I don't. But, um, <laughs> you know, Biden. You know, you did what you did. You know, you did. I what think you, it was a good move. It, it it had to happen because that man, that man was. But then, like, then they just say he announced that he had COVID. Yeah, just like nigga, like, bro, you caught COVID. Yeah, <laughs> like, I forgot niggas was still getting COVID. Yeah, yeah, like you caught COVID, nigga, and then he like that man. Uh, and you know, you know, you know, you know, it's crazy too. Like he just he was he just looked tired, man. Like he he, he looked tired, like bro, just you know, what I'm saying just. Go sit down, man. Hopefully, hopefully your Democrat, your Democratic compart- compatriots, whatever the fuck you want to say, will help you out. Make sure they get the right person for the job in there. Um, and shit, we just gonna see from there, man. So I think the Democratic National Convention is coming up real soon too. Um, so probably gonna end up giving that announcement, and then whoever's gonna be there. But you better get you like a, a nice. If you gonna have Kamala be the be the president, man. You know what I'm saying? But that's that's what I'm that's what I'm worried about. Cause I'm hearing, I'm hearing Biden is not going to endorse Kamala. What? Yep. Oh shit. I'm hearing that, but I don't know what's gonna happen. But I'm hearing he's not gonna endorse her. Ooh, all right. I guess we're gonna see. Yeah. So I was hearing that. Um. I don't know why. I don't know why her name being thrown out there. But I know for, I know for a fact. Like nigga, I would eat a shoe if she even jumping this shit. This nigga said a shoe. They talking about Michelle Obama might run. I'm like nigga, I would nah, eat it. That <laughs> shit ain't happening. Them niggas is happy and they are cool not ever being them. I think, you know what I think what is what did it? What was that? I legit think it was Obama saying that. Yeah, he got to go. I, well, just basically saying that, like, it wasn't happening. Yeah. I think that was kind of like the hand on the back that was like, all right, we can let this dream go. Yeah. Because that shit, I, even if you think that shit, I think he shouldn't have said it. No, I don't think he should. I think he shouldn't have said it. No, he shouldn't have said that shit. But you know, I think you know, what I'm saying there was a lot of pressure from the Democrats and everything. Just like you know, you got to step down. You got to step down. I ain't never seen no shit like this before. Me either. Not during a, not during the middle of an election. I've never seen he nothing just, like this. He should have had no business running in the first place. The nigga was too fucking old. After, you know, Obama did his two terms. Like that should have been that nigga ending in politics. He was old then. Yeah. But you know they was just like, all right, well let's Y'all just gotta put and after this shit put a cap on these. Oh cars. yeah, 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 it gotta be a cap on this pilot on like nigga, you, like over like, I say you shouldn't be president over the age of seventy. Yeah. That's why I look at it. I like over the age of seventy, and you got to take a cock. And even then, that still seems old because if you do two terms, you're gonna be seventy eight. Yeah. Like that's like no. Cause I mean, you know what I'm saying? Like we got people in the '80s and '90s is running this country, dog, and that's why the, this is why the country's in the way it is right now. Because you got all these old motherfuckers still thinking it's the '60s and the '70s, and it's not. It's yeah, not. It's crazy. It's a crazy time. But let's get into our usual. Yes, yeah. So you know, shout out to them. Um, see what happens from there. 
everything. So yeah, what we got? What we got first? Hmm. Where do I want to start? Well, you know what? I guess let's. I feel like we got like three different. No, two lists on here. Right. Is it two or three? Yeah, it's two lists on here. So let's knock one of these lists out. All right, cool. Where we at? I feel like we spend a lot of time on that. So yeah, we do. You shared in a group. Forbes dropped a list of what was it? Top twenty-five. <laughs> the twenty-five greatest R&B artists of all time. Ooh. I don't know Forbes to be geniuses and we got to st- one thing for sure and it's, it made for great content but we got to stop giving these niggas country to make these fucking lists man like why why is a why is a why is a, a, a business magazine a business magazine making a making something about oh i got another list for you too it's from family feud <laughs> for family feud we'll, we'll talk about that we're just gonna compile all this shit together we're gonna knock all these lists out in one topic so yeah i don't like even when i scroll through the article it's just I don't see anything justifying as to who the fuck thought that we needed. And it was like from their senior contributor, like and it was like the entertainment area. We don't need a list from y'all. No, no, not from four. Tell me about the top twenty five grossing R and B artists. No, nah, no, don't don't give me that. Like if you wanna talk about top twenty five R and B artists, you gotta get a nigga like our age or maybe older or some shit like that. It was written by a bitch named Jack Jacqueline Schneider. Google her. That last name, I think she's Jewish anyway, so. I mean, <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised. <laughs> All right, Jackie, let's look in. Yeah, because I'm, uh... Oh, here we go. <laughs> Uh-oh, Aunt. Oh, man. Oh. Yeah, this is, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So Jacqueline, she's a senior contributor, a host, a current mood podcast from New York Arts and Entertainment and Technology. Let me see the picture. Yeah, that's not good. Nope. Yeah. Nope. Where is where is the lady that where's the lady with the mac and cheese arms, nigga? That's what you need for the R and B shit right there. You are so irritated. I'm so serious, man. Like. Yeah, this is not. This is not who I'm looking for. For a list from. Not at all. No. He normally does the Hollywood and entertainment information. And I just, I need to know more about your background, more about you in general before you drop a list, you know, about niggas. But all right, anywho, and this is her first time. She did the top 25 uh, greatest print songs of all time. I'm scared to even look at that list. Uh, 30 sad songs for when you need a good cry. Yeah, I sound, yeah, I sound like a white woman um, list. Yeah. No, thank you. But in the meantime, let's tear this shit apart. <sighs> um. start, start, start from 25. <laughs> I wish Reggie was here for this one because I know he'd have been yes. going off. I know he'd have been going off. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> um, Cleo Soul. That's 25. Yeah. Who the fuck is that? British sing British singer, um, new school of R and B great. I have heard of her before. Um, I've heard one song. And she actually is a decent singer. I don't know that she belongs on any top twenty five list thus far. Um, but she's inspired by Erica Badu, Stevie Wonder, Joe Scott. Um, but yeah, I don't know if she belongs in the top twenty five. Okay. Number twenty four, Dwelle. Not gonna lie, I forgot about that nigga a little bit. Yeah, I wouldn't put him in the top twenty-five, but okay, keep going. Um, he worked closely with Jay Dilla, Slum Village, um, more so the conscious hip hop R and B artist. Uh, I'm not mad at this one. Number twenty-three is ex- Escape. Okay. Yeah. Um, they belong there. I don't know if I would put them as low as twenty-three. Mm-hmm. Number twenty-two, Flowetry. The Queens. They belong there. Okay. I don't know. Again, if I'll put them that hey, low on the list. You just, you know, just keep going, cause I, <laughs> just, just keep going. Twenty one, keep sweats. Hmm. All right, he belong. I mean, he he, he top twenty five probably. I don't know. Okay. Yeah. Twenty brownstone niggas don't even remember brownstone. That's wild. But they was a fire group. I thought they were. You know, it'd have been perfect for this topic, Corey. 
Cause, really? cause, yeah, Corey's a big R and B head. He'd have been perfect for this topic. He needs to come on the show one day in general. Yeah, I'm gonna yeah, yeah. set that up. He he got to be present. Yeah, I'm gonna set that up. Um, Brownstone, which a lot of niggas don't remember them. I thought they were a one hit wonder, but maybe not. Um, then you move up nineteen uh, to number nineteen is Tina Turner. Okay. Would you consider her R and B? I so at some point she crossed over and became what rock and roll. Yeah. Or like. Would you even say pop? Yeah, I don't know if I consider her R and B. Like, I don't know, man. But all right. I mean, she—that's where she started. Yeah. But um, so number eighteen, SWV, positively top twenty-five. Yeah. Positive. I have no qualms about that. Mm. Me either. Number seventeen, Aaron Neville. All right, I don't know who the fuck that is. Do you know who that is? I don't. Okay, that's weird. That's that's probably her. What's number sixteen? I, I'm I'm trying to, I'm trying to be nice. I'm trying um, to be nice. Sixteen, which I appreciate them being on the list in Vogue. Yeah, they were that. They were that. You know, back then, the level in which they sing and harmonize. Oh my god! So they definitely belong on the list. Um, fifteen, John Legend. He's not in my top twenty-five. I like John, I like John Legend, but he's not in my top twenty-five R and B artists. He's not in my top twenty-five. I'm I don't a, think he. Would, I I think if I had to do a top fifty, <laughs> probably yeah, you know. But, but top twenty-five, nah. No, nah, you, you want to know why I say this shit? Why? Carlos Miller killed the mystique of John Legend. Didn't he? Mm. he said Carlos Miller said John Legend make music that white people get married to. I wanted to get married to a John Legend song. What song? Um, damn, I don't even remember. It's an old ass song. I don't We're know. just ordinary no. people. <laughs> no, no, no. Take it slow. Take I think that's just because that's one of his more popular. That's all they get married to. We're just ordinary people. people get married to ordinary people? Yes. Oh, that's gross. Yeah, motherfuckers. Is, you don't get married to ordinary people? White people. They get married They get married to that damn song. So, no, I wouldn't have John Legend in my top 25. Oh, all of me. Jesus Christ, yeah. 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 All right, what's the next one, man? <laughs> we got to get up there. <laughs> Just, I'm not with John Legend on that list, man. All right. Um, number 14, Anita Baker. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> oh, man. He, she should, honestly, she should be higher. She should be higher. I think Anita Baker makes herself so unlikable. Yeah, so it's like, but but she definitely need to be in that top twenty five though. Yeah, she has to be in that top twenty five. Yeah, she is. You know, bust down the house on Sundays cleaning mm-hmm. music. So you gotta have her up there. Exactly. Um, thirteen, Al Green. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's cool. Twelve, Brandy. Who the fuck said Brandy couldn't sing? That was you. <laughs> that was you. All right. No. It's not. I'm No, she can't. I mean, I was about to clean that shit up, but no, she can't. She can't fucking sing. She can't sing. Yeah. All She's right. another Cassie. Wow. Where it's like that monotone. Wow. Like, she's not a singer to me. Wow. No. Wow. I'm sorry. That's wild. Okay, what's the next one? Okay, yeah, Number yeah. eleven, Jill Scott, the Queen. Top. She need to be higher. Yeah. She needs to be higher. That Not, bitch singer. Yeah, no, she, man. She. And another bitch that should have been at least top five, top five. Mariah Carey. Number ten. I'll put her top three. To be honest with you, man. I'm telling. Yeah, you. That, yeah, they crazy for that. Yeah, that. Okay, yeah, yeah. Talking about, yeah, that, that. So now I'm curious, now that we add 10, I'm curious to see who they got in here. Oh, All right, number nine, TLC. Top 25, but not top 10. No, exactly. Um, number eight, Usher. Absolutely. fucking lutely. Top five, in my opinion, but, you know. Absolutely. Number seven, and I... <laughs> I don't I don't know why... Aaliyah. Not top 25. She should... <sighs> She did not live long enough and not have a big enough discography to be a top 25. Hey, man, look, I'm going to just go ahead and say it. I'm going to go ahead and say it because he's not on this list. But R. Kelly should have been somewhere on that list. 
Um, I hate to say it. Yeah, he should have been signed. But as a Jewish white woman, yeah, they, I'm not trying to ruffle no feathers. <laughs> I wouldn't put R. Kelly on the list. Yeah. So for, I, for black for R and B, yeah, like rhythm and blues. That nigga, that nigga probably would have been number one. Honestly, I wouldn't have put him number one. I wouldn't. Have, but you can't take away. You can't take away what that nigga did. I mean, he's a piece of shit. Like that, like that. There's like I'm not defending this motherfucker. He's a piece of shit. But, but when it comes to R, booty. But when it comes to R and B and all the other shit, I don't know. What's, what's number six? What's number six? Because <laughs> I'm yeah. <laughs> Brace yourself, people. Mm-hmm. Uh, Frank Ocean shouldn't even be shouldn't even be on the list at all. Like get yeah. the fuck like get the fuck out of here, and Frank Amelia Ocean. Should not be in the top. You got Frank Ocean over. You know, keep going because I'm 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 a rant. Keep going. Five, SZA. Dog, they got SZA higher than Mariah Carey. Higher than Mariah Carey. I'm not going to say SZA not that bitch, but I would not put that bitch higher than Mariah Carey. <sighs> Number four, Sade. I'm not, I'm not terribly mad at that. At number four? I'm, I, I, her being on the list, I'm not mad at, but yeah. I wouldn't have put Anita Baker above her. I would too. I mean, I mean, I would put Anita Baker above her. I would too. I would too. Number three, Mary J. Blige. All right. She definitely belongs there. I don't know that she's number three, but holy fucking shit, they got D'Angelo at number two. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I hate to say this. This shit is Hold a on. I, I, I hate to say this. This is how you know somebody just started listening to R&B. This list is how you know somebody just started listening to R&B like maybe five or ten years ago. Because mm-hmm. that's crazy. D'Angelo at number two. Number two. Number two, dog. He don't have the body of work to be number two. Jesus fucking Christ. This might this might be the worst list we have ever this like. Is the worst. This, yeah. is positive. this might be the worst list we have we have ever went over. Damn. And number one. Erica Badu. You know what's wild? What was that? Is that Lauren Hill ain't on the list? Cause they keep thinking that bitch is hip hop, man. <laughs> that's, the pro- <laughs> that's the problem. <laughs> they keep thinking that bitch is hip hop, man. <laughs> But no, it's both. But no, let me tell you, this is where I'm. This is where I'm pissed off at. Mm-hmm. Where the fuck is Marvin Gaye? Yeah, that's, the, they got. I think that was like uh, maybe choose between Marvin Gaye and Alvin Green type shit. Where the fuck is Tenny Pettigrass? Mm. You know what I'm saying? Where the fuck is uh, Shaka Khan, nigga? Where is Shaka Khan, dog? Is Shaka Khan considered R&B? Hell yes, yeah, you're R&B. Damn. Like, I would have put Monica on the list. What about Aretha Franklin? Oh, my God. Is Patti LaBelle? Patti LaBelle. Yeah, Patti LaBelle. She's not on the fucking list. Like, if you can put the greats on there. No, you got to put the greats on there. 25 of all time, and, and they're not on there? Yeah, the, the 25 greatest R&B artists of all time. But you got D'Angelo at number two and Frank Ocean at number six. Nigga, at five. Frank fucking Ocean, nigga, who, who don't release music like that. And Aaliyah at seven. Like, That's some wild. Come on, this is this I'm I'm this is this is a motherfucker who just started listening to R and B. This list it's is terrible. It's egregious. Like where the fuck Prince at? I wish I could leave a review. Where is Prince at? That shit oh my god. Where is Prince? Where is the, fuck it. Even though they call him the King of Pop, nigga. I was Mike, gonna say. Even though they call him the King of Pop. Nah, you can't put you can't put Michael Jackson on this list. Man. You can't. Billy Jean is one of the greatest R and B songs ever. Like he got some R and B songs, man. I really wish you could leave a review about this list because this is the most. This is terrible. like you have the wrong you you have the wrong people putting these lists together. Like these people should not be putting these lists together. I'm sorry, like she just you could tell she just started listening to R and B. This terrible. That, it's a terrible fucking list. It's a horrible list. You leave out Marvin fucking Gay. And her description is. Soulful voices, unforgettable hits, timeless classics. And you ain't got Marvin Gaye on it. I got one. I got one even better for what you. What timeless no, classic no, does no, no, Frank Ocean have? No, 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 no. I got one. I got one better for you. Mm-hmm. Where the fuck is Stevie Wonder? Mm. Where is Stevie Wonder? You talking about soulful hits, unforgettable classics? Where's Stevie Wonder? Earth, Wind, and Fire. Mm. And I'm not an R&B head. I'm not an R&B head. 
I'm not. James Brown. Jack. Yeah, that's crazy. That's the worst list ever. That's the worst list anybody ever came up with. Yeah. And Forbes and Forbes looked at that shit. Oh, we're gonna and publish it. it and, publish. and publish that shit. Egregious. It's very egregious, man. Look, I'm I'm gonna just go ahead and say this. If you don't got the knowledge about this shit, don't make a list about this shit. Don't make a list about this shit if you don't know. Like, nigga, Erica Badu shit compared to all of them, Erica Badu shit ain't be in the top ten. Have you seen this? Seen what? Yeah, I've seen that. That's interesting. It is what it is, but I don't even want to I don't even want to talk about that motherfucker because I'm so tired of talking about them. I just I cause he keep I just need him. He he lost, nigga. You lost. I mean, there's nothing wrong. There's Every, nothing wrong with taking. Everyone has to take an L. Now. You have to take an L. This nigga don't want to take the L. Like fuck, it, we can break it. We can get into it for a little bit. Drake, take the L, nigga. I don't want to hear academics talk, uh, make an announcement that he's gonna release a song subliminally dissing. Like y'all niggas making announcements for subliminal disses, nigga. Nobody, no, nobody cares, dog. Like just take your L, nigga, and move on. Y'all keep saying sh- y'all keep you you got this you got this Tom and Jerry looking motherfucker keep trying to talk shit. I think he took his L. I think he just waiting for everybody to like move the fuck. We can't move on, nigga. If you keep having people talking about some um, well he got a song coming out. He's gonna subliminally diss Kendrick on there. Who gives yeah, a I fuck? Think we should be done with. We it. should be done with this shit, nigga. Let that nigga take his victory lap. You going you go in your cave, nigga. You go fix whatever the fuck going on in your house when that shit got flooded. You take care of that shit. You come up with some different music. Don't focus on trying to subliminally distance, nigga, no shit like that, dog, because nobody fucking cares anymore, man. You you lost, nigga. You lost, dog. Academics, you lost. Y'all niggas lost, man. Just let it the fuck go. <laughs> niggas lost, man. Like, could he could the academics come out some, yeah, I fed Kendrick the info about the I'm like, no, you didn't. Nigga, you lost, man. Just let it the fuck go. Y'all niggas lost, man. Yeah, I'm over it. I'm over this Let's shit, get man. Back to some music. Man, that's just but that yeah, fuck that lady for that list. I'm gonna just go ahead and say it. I'm not gonna call her a bitch. I wanted to, <laughs> but I'm not. But please, man, like no, that's not that that list is not it. No, thank you, Jack. You yeah, just don't go, you know what I'm saying? If you do like cause I I promise you, she probably wanted to put Adele in that list. She wanted to put Adele in that list. She wanted to put Adele. I wouldn't even have been mad at that. <laughs> she would have put Adele and Sam Smith on that even list. No, she's mostly like pop. <laughs> I wouldn't even have been mad at that because niggas love Adele. But like you left off some pivotal people. Like just I think the biggest I think the important. I think the biggest one is Stevie Wonder. Stevie Wonder got Stevie Wonder. That's that's a slant. Nigga, that's a layup. Yeah. Stevie Wonder, Stevie Wonder and Marvin Gaye, layups. You didn't even have to put R. Kelly on that list. You could he didn't have to he didn't have to be on that list. But them two fucking layups. Yeah, that was wild. It is what it is, man. But so since we're still talking about egregious things, um, so I'm sure everyone has seen these at interviews um, of Pop Smoke's killer on um, No Jumper, and I don't know. I don't know how I feel about it. I feel like not everybody needs a platform, um, but I'm gonna play a little clip of his interview and then uh we'll talk about like yeah. some standpoints his mom had oh before before you go before you go my bad he is endorsing kamala harris he is yeah he's endorsing her he just announced his endorsement for her. Okay, okay that's bad. good yeah <laughs> but yeah that's how it is california that's a bold statement to say so what do you feel like what do you feel like you should have what should have happened to you well, I mean, I can't say what, what's happened to me. What do you say to the people who feel like uh, you got off too lightly and they wanted to see you some nah. forever in jail? They right. I did get off too lightly. Yeah, California be like that now. California. But, yeah, that's how it is, California. That's a bold statement to say, so what do you feel? Number one, we got to get... Adam 22 is the worst. Adam 22 is worse than Vlad. It's like... It's like, why would you... Even Vlad, even Vlad wouldn't touch no shit like that. He'd have left that shit alone. Like, nah, I ain't about to interview that. My thing is, I don't know if it's a good or bad thing. I don't know if it's a good thing to have a platform that's like fucking unbiasedly we interviewing the scumbags, the fucking just everybody, or if it's like everybody don't need to be on a show. Like, does a man who killed somebody way before their prime, for money, mind you, for money, you killed that man for a materialistic possession. Um, 
then you pay them. You pay the inter- you pay this Everybody motherfucker the interview. Show. It's just I don't it's know. stupid. Like I don't know. And could you imagine if Nipsey Hussle's murderer tried to do an interview? I'm pretty sure they tried to. I'm like, pretty, I, I'm pretty sure they tried to. I wouldn't be able to see this. I don't. I don't see the him walking out of the building alive. I don't see that happening. You know what? Yeah, he wouldn't. He, he they know they know what to do. Even he said it himself. He's like, yeah, we can talk shit about Chicago, New York, and all that shit. But when it comes to L.A., we can't do that. Mm-hmm. He was telling um, DJ Academics Junior Flacco to stop doing this shit with the L.A. shit. Said Junior. Yeah, but look, he but look, one thing about it, Adam Twenty Two can't go to LA, can't go to New York for a while. He go out there. They gonna they gonna, he gonna go out there. They gonna just stay they, in my neighborhood. He better stay. He better he better keep his he better keep his white ass over there where he at because they gonna fuck him up if he go to New York. Yeah, that shit. It's stupid. Like, bro, I get you. Like, I get your I get no jumper has been falling off and you trying to re, you trying to reclaim that shit. But there's other ways of doing that shit. Yeah. Like you got you have people you have a- academics. The motherfucker who did the war in Chirac. He came out there and said I wouldn't have done that. That's what they mean by culture vulture. That's a that's a culture oh, vulture man. You got one culture vulture calling you the pot calling the kettle black because <laughs> you got one culture vulture mm-hmm. saying like I wouldn't have did that shit. Like you shouldn't have did that. It's dumb. That's that's culture vulture ass shit. And you got people reliving. You, you interviewed you interviewed this motherfucker. You got people reliving shit. How you think this? How you think this man mind feel? Well, we about to get into yeah. It. Play that. See someone who was granted another chance at life do interviews and be so disrespectful and disentuned and disingenuous. It makes me so angry. And I find myself writing and like, you are scum of the earth. And then I just kind of like reel back and say, TT, that's not the energy that you need to have. But it, it makes me so angry. And I often think about you and how that how you may feel. And if you even pay any of that any attention or you close it all out. I'm not tuned into that. It's not so much that I'm closing it out. It's that it's just not a part of my world. Mm-hmm. So I have people who will come mm-hmm. and say, have you heard? You know, people hit me up on, you know, Ma, are you okay? And I'm like, yeah, what's the matter? You know, um... And I felt the way when you just said that he was being disrespectful because I've been told that he's been interviewing and being disrespectful and I got to let that go. <laughs> yeah. Cause I- so that's her stance on it. Like I, sometimes you do have to just. You got to protect. She's protecting. She's protecting her peace right Positively. now. Positively. She's protecting her peace. Positively. And the, and the dumb part is too, that little nigga, the little nigga who did the interview with, she ain't learned shit. Oh no. He going to end up, he, he not even going to make it to 30. I mean, he was able to admit that he did get let off too easy. Yeah, I mean, but he contradicted himself but like, all through the interview. She was saying, you know, um, it's it's about what he does with his new lease on life. Yeah, because that's what he did get. So hopefully, I don't know, something will change down the line, and he'll do something. He, but. Well, I know one thing: he just, he can't go to New York because uh, them, them niggas, them niggas, them niggas gonna be waiting for him. It's just it's it's fucked up. It's just reopening a wound that shouldn't have been opened. Like, you know, what I'm saying you shouldn't. Just let it. Just let it go, man. But you know he's so. But Adam Twenty Two is so harder for content. Like he's so harder for content that this motherfucker. He, well, you can't. I'm gonna just go ahead and say this. You can't. You can't trust a motherfucker who gonna let anybody fuck his wife, who run the game, who 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 run who ran a game show like who's gonna fuck my wife or some shit like that. Yeah. So I you, mean I don't know if it's like a, a need for money or some shit like that. It's it's he he's trying to make sure no jumper goes under because nobody's really fucking with that shit right now. Like he he didn't did so much shit. He tried to turn that bitch into like a uh, he tried to turn that bitch into a political show. Nobody was fucking with. Mm-hmm. That's why he been sticking with the gang politics shit. That's why he been having all them gang members up there like that. And that's shit crazy as hell. He needs to come out of that ASAP. He don't know what the fuck he gonna do, man. <sighs> well. So, I don't know, man. Uh, bro, you just be just be careful what you're doing as far as making content. I mean, I think you need to do some like heavy self evaluation when you want to interview people like that. I, I'm inviting a lot of energy into. You yeah, today. that's that's a lot of bad energy. Like, and like I said, like I don't even think Vlad would do no shit like that. Yeah. Like, it's certain things. He's you got want. a like a small code of. When you call it, the but then again, he, but then again, he kept having Keefy D on there. 
talking about keep re, keep reiterating how the Tupac murder happened and all the other shit too. So that's another. Th- so you know what? Just culture vultures, man. You gotta keep. You gotta keep, like these motherfuckers, man. You just yeah. We got now. Now I don't really believe in gatekeeping, but shit like that you need to gatekeep. Yeah. You gotta keep certain. certain things. You gotta keep certain motherfuckers away from shit, man. And he's one of them that you gotta keep away from this shit, man. Him, you gotta keep that motherfucker away, man. So I don't know. I think this this shit's gonna blow up, and this shit's gonna blow up in Adam Twenty Two's face. How do you feel about this? Well, Adam the Sixteen, I should call him. Oh, God. how do you feel about the Sixteenth of Nazareth? Oh, um, Jay Prince and um, May shit. <sighs> because I'm assuming you've seen the. Oh yeah. I, oh, I seen. It. I watched the whole thing. Look. Shout out to Mace and shout out to Cameron. Because what Jay Prince is doing is unbecoming of an OG. Yeah. Like, bro, like, just leave it. Like, you got the clip. Oh, oh. Play the clip. I have been <laughs> waiting to play this. Because when he said it, it was like, it just, everything I've said about Jay Prince and a lot of these OGs is acting like this. Like, it was just like, yes, this is how I've been feeling. I'm glad somebody fucking said it. God damn it, I lost the clip. Or did I send it to the group chat? I hate when I save some shit and niggas fucking delete the clip and I gotta go looking for it again like a dumbass. Yeah, hold on. Let me see if I can find it for you. I'm just... This 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 Biden shit is going crazy right now. I saw I, so when I went to play yeah. the Pop Smoke um uh clip, I saw that. Like, nigga, it was damn near every other like every other post. Yeah, it, it, it's going crazy right now. Um I love it. I love it. So he's endorsing Kamala. Yeah, he's endorsing Kamala and they said um Bashir from um the Kentucky governor might be her running mate. Uh, his name is John. His name is Andrew Bashir. He's a um, he's a governor. He's a governor of Kentucky. I, he's he's young too. He's forty six years old. So what is he? He's a governor of Kentucky. Here it is. Mm-hmm. Okay. No, I mean like I know he's a. <laughs> oh, he's a Democrat. <laughs> no, like Bashir. Is he Indian? Is he black? Like what the fuck is he? Oh, he's a hundred percent white man. Okay. Yeah. Name Bashir. Andrew I... Graham Bashir. Maybe I'm saying his name Bashar? wrong. Okay. Bashir. Yeah. Maybe I'm saying his name wrong. But yeah. I hope so. All right, here, here's the clip of what May said. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to tell you another thing. When you're dealing with older people, they're the last to know that things have changed. We're not your little niggas. Like, the way you... I don't get what you mean. We're not your little niggas. Like, for real. All that big homie stuff, that's for little niggas. Little mm-hmm. niggas have big homies. We're not little niggas, mm-hmm. so we don't even respect big homies. I know Killer doesn't, and for me... I never respected niggas in the streets. That's why I always got the problems I got. Niggas would tell me, Maze, chill. No, chill for what? If I got a lord, like the dudes that raised me, if I was out of pocket, they would tell me I'm out of pocket. They wouldn't let me put them on a crash out mission. They would say, yo, Maze, listen, listen. We don't send niggas to do nothing for us. Yep. We don't pay niggas to handle our problems. Yep. You got to put in your own work around here, little man. That's what you were supposed to tell him. You can't go out here and talk crazy and then send me on a mission. Yep. Nah, this is where the game is. Young niggas started sending old niggas out. And just because this little ignorant nigga got a few dollars, he make all of you that's supposed to be real run after his mission. Mm. This is a problem, Jay Prince. And I'm going to tell you like this. If you're 60 years old... Mm. And you trying to be a street nigga? <laughs> you failed. You failed. And you know, it's it's the wrong niggas that's quoting that shit too. That shit not be quoting that shit. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, it's the wrong niggas I heard quoting that shit that should not be quoting that shit right now. But Macy's 100% right with that. Oh, absolutely. 100%. And like, that's been the thing with Jay Prince. As like, he became... And like nigga, you got a lot like of dirt. A, a mascot hood. Nigga. Yeah, and it's like nigga, and and that was never Jay Prince. That's the shit that fucked me up. That was never Jay Prince. Mm. Like nigga, like when Cameron said I lost respect for you, that says something because Cameron did respect. Like a lot of people respect Jay Prince, but doing shit like this is wild, man. And niggas is not and like and like and like and like they said, we not your little niggas. Mm. You don't. You can't. I'm not your little nigga. You're not about to come up here and try to tell me what I can or can't say. I'm not. I'm not scared of you. Yeah. Like, 
if anybody like if anybody like my brother would pull me to the side like nigga what you doing you know what I'm saying? Cause that's the, you know what I'm saying. That's my older brother. He's gonna pull me to the side and let me know, like nigga, you wildin'. You know what I'm saying? I don't. I ain't got niggas out here. I'm trying like, yeah, that's my little nigga. I don't do that shit, man. Cause I respect you. <sighs> but you got other, you know, just it's 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 just strange, man. Even that, even that, shit, even how to the, even how they handled the takeoff shit. That shit was handled poorly. That shit was handled poorly. Yeah. Even even like when he was saying about NBA Young Boy, Super fucking poorly. even that shit with NBA Young Boy, when them niggas stole NBA Young Boy keys, why are you going on a camera, putting yourself on camera like I got your keys and all this other shit? And NBA Young Boy was like, nigga, fuck you, nigga, like, yeah, because that nigga, you just trying to get clout. <sighs> all 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 that shit is doing, he's trying to he's trying to get clout, bro. Yeah, he's too old for that shit. Man, like, yeah, nigga, like, it's it's like, nigga, you you a family man now. Is he though? He's yeah, shit, he's supposed to be. I mean, he dating he dating Tracy Edmonds and this shit. His sons out here, they don't run around have the mob ties shit. Leave that shit for your sons. That's what the fuck they were supposed to be doing. You know what I'm saying? You shouldn't be coming out there saying this shit. Mm-mm. Should be your sons, but nah, but that, that's what you know. What I'm saying that's why I respect Cam and Mace for that shit. They stood on they too, like nigga. We not taking back anything we said, nigga. Yeah. We not taking back what we said about this nigga. He better. He got to learn how to handle criticism. That too. That's another thing. Y'all niggas don't know how to handle criticism, dog. Y'all, y'all so fast to dish that shit out, try to criticize or give critique on things. But when niggas critique you, you don't know how to take it. Y'all motherfuckers all silent and shit, saying this and that. Don't know how to handle a conversation. Don't know how to handle an adult conversation. Most niggas and bitches don't know how to. They don't. They don't know how to do that shit, man. And I don't. And I don't want to be out here trying to like. I don't. You know what I'm saying? But I'm just telling the truth. Like nigga, if you come criticize me, cool. I'll handle that shit as a man. Y'all niggas can't handle. Y'all niggas can't handle that shit. No. But y'all want to be. But y'all want to be out there and y'all want to be respected. And y'all want niggas. Y'all want niggas to respect you or follow behind you and shit. I can't follow behind a motherfucker who can't take criticism. Yeah. You can't do that shit. So it's just it's it's, it's uh, like I said, man. It's awkward to see people co-signing what May said, nigga. When y'all niggas trying to y'all niggas acting like Jay Prince, but just younger. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? All this shit, man. So. No nah, man, salute salute to them. They said exactly what the fuck they were supposed to say. Like, nigga, you not scaring nobody out here. You damn sure like where was you at? Well, why didn't you say shit to Kendrick? Mm. Them West Coast niggas don't respect you, man. Mm. Them West Coast niggas do not respect you. They don't have to. They don't have to, nigga, because you nigga, nigga, you come here with that shit, nigga, you ain't gonna make it home. Like, nigga, we ain't gotta come to Houston if we ain't we ain't gotta come to Houston, nigga. It is what it is. We ain't gotta come there. Mm. We can stay like nigga, we good, we good over here on the West. Cause you can't, cause even, you know. Now I think about it too. When that whole Meek and Drake shit was popping off, mm-hmm. them Philly niggas ain't respect uh, Jay Prince. Mm. They was they, they was like, man, where your Drake? Where Drake bitch ass? I remember that shit too. Jay Prince was standing out there in Philly, mm-hmm. whatever behind the gate or some shit like that. Meek and all them Philly niggas was over there yelling, calling that nigga all types of bitch ass niggas and shit. They didn't care, man. They, like these little young niggas don't care. They don't give a fuck about what you did back in the day. No, not it's all about what you're doing now. Very much so. But that's why. But also too, that's why. Uh, that's don't care that's why a lot of niggas. Re- that's why a lot of niggas respect Fifty too, because Fifty would still be out there. I remember that, that they said that nigga was over there busting U turns on Slauson, like, and Fifty was like, nigga, by himself, like, hey, you know where such and such at? They like, nigga, that's Fifty Cent, nigga. He's like, no, he was a cool nigga for that one. He stopped and talked to us. So you know what I'm saying, like. I ain't giving Fifty Cent too much credit. Nah, man, that, 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 them, them young niggas respect Fifty Cent, man. Them young niggas respect him. So like you know what I'm saying when you still out you know what I'm saying when you just doing things for the hood stuff like that niggas respect that shit man not you going on Twitter or Instagram sending out threats and shit like that man niggas don't respect that shit man you supposed to be one of the OGs nigga what the fuck you doing on here sending out shit sending out threats over the internet and shit nigga like come on yeah, yeah, yeah niggas got and that's, and that's so fucked up man the old niggas get a hold of that technology, man. They learn, they learn how to do that shit. They start. <laughs> no, I'm so serious. Them old niggas, they get a hold of the technology and shit, and they be sitting there and they just looking at this shit like, yeah, this is gonna fuck them up. No, nigga. It remind me of uh, Nicki Minaj's. Husband. Oh, husband doing it. That's another old nigga. That's a, I ain't like nigga. Hey, nigga, what are you doing? And like nigga, you got a case of rape, nigga. So yeah, we we damn sure respect no niggas Crazy like you, man. Hell, two a.m. on the corner with a bunch of with niggas. a bunch of ni- with a bunch of niggas in their forties and shit. Tell me where you at, Offset? Why this nigga down there casting out house in Atlanta, nigga over there <laughs> dancing and shit, man? Having the time, having the time of his fucking life. You got these old niggas standing out, man. Like, come on, man. Like, and nigga, you ain't earned no stripes anyway, nigga. You nigga, your case is for rape, nigga. Mm. Nigga don't respect that shit, man. 
Ooh, Damn, how you, how you got me. <laughs> Speaking of time. I just, oh, man, I just don't like that shit, man. I don't, I man. Don't. I do not like that shit, man. I don't like this fake ass. I don't like this fake ass shit that everybody in, dog. Just be your fucking self, nigga. You ain't got to come out here throwing up, throwing up shit that you don't know nothing about, or man. Or don't, because some of y'all not likable in real life. Yeah, just throwing shit up, like, throwing shit up, trying to be cool. Like, nigga, that shit ain't cool, man. It's not cool, bro. Like, you throwing shit up like that, trying to impress other niggas. Trying what to be... What else y'all going to impress? Trying to... That, that's... Oh, my God, dog. Like, I, like I understand... Like, like 50 said, man, like, we do this... Sometimes we do this shit for the bitches, man. <laughs> Excuse my French. But... It's just weird, dog. It's just oh, weird, man. It's weird, dog. Because you're still on your tangent. So Sean Kingston, yeah, his mother, it's... faced 20 years in prison on federal indictment for a, a million-dollar fraud case. Have you heard about this? Yes, I did. So yeah. <clears throat> according to TMZ, a grand jury in Miami indicted Sean Kingston and his mom, Janice Turner, which with one count of conspiracy to commit wire fraud and five counts of actual wire fraud. Both are facing six counts. If convicted, they're facing a maximum of 20 years in prison on each count. Damn. And that's, I, like, y'all got to listen to that. A maximum of 20 years in prison on each on each count. And they got the evidence on that shit, too. They got the evidence like, on the motherfuckers. Nigga, too. it's six counts. So even and twenty years is the maximum. So say, say you split down the middle and they get ten years. Her count that's sixty years. And they ain't got the and they don't have the money to fight this case either. They don't have that money to fight this case. Clearly they don't. No, so if they doing wire fraud. But back in May, Sean and Janice were arrested following a raid in his Florida mansion. Today they both appear in federal court for the first time. They're facing federal charges after being accused of defrauding business businesses, I'm sorry, out of more than a million dollars. That's going to be some interesting shit to watch. Because, like, God damn. <laughs> That's why you got to manage your money well. Invest. Yeah. You got to you gotta invest. If it's not working out, nigga, pivot. Cause I mean, I'm, I mean, look, just, just, let's just be, let's just be real. If you're a public figure, and people know who you are and all that other shit, man. Just, and you know, stop trying to keep up. With, like, if you falling off, stop, don't keep up with the Joneses, dog. For one, two, man, just figure, just don't do anything fucking illegal. Yeah, man. Start walking around like J Cole, no jewelry on, no haircut, just save your money, nigga. Shit, either that, or just do, do the Lil Wayne, just wear, wear whatever the fuck you want to wear, nigga, and just be, just be in your own bubble and shit. You know what I'm saying? But. Yeah, that's the problem, man. Y'all like and and Sean Kingston was not making music. His music wasn't hitting like that for the nigga to be living the way he was living. I mean, he had a a a hell of a hit single, maybe two, but not for him to continue. Like, come on, nigga, that was you like, over there. Tell, you talking about though. you over there promising people like, yeah, Bieber, my boy. You know what I'm saying? We gonna we gonna shout you. He'll make sure Bieber shot you out, and Bieber don't do this shit. Like, nigga, that's some whole ass, like nigga. You putting people in jeopardy over that shit too. Ooh we so. Hey, I you know what? Shit, handle your business, bro. All I can tell you, man, shit, better hope them lawyers, better hope you got some good ass lawyers over there, man. But nine times, but ten times, nine times, I'm gonna say nine times out of ten because I've seen niggas, I've seen niggas beat them fair cases, which is fucking crazy to me. And if they do beat that fair case, yeah, they probably, he actually did that shit, huh? It's different when you actually do that shit. Yeah, NBA young boy, NBA young boy beat the feds. Boozy just recently beat the feds. Well, NBA like, NBA young boy about to be one and one with the feds because um they they oh they got. Jesus Christ, they got him, man. That's another story too. Like for the shit that he was doing, man. Like nigga, you was over there impersonating people to get fake, get scripts, nigga, for fucking lean and walking shit, nigga. Like that shit's wild as hell too. <sighs> so nah, man. Like it's 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 possible you could beat the feds, man. But shit, like I said, booze. I don't know. I don't know. But that's wild, dog. I, I don't I don't see them getting the full max. Oh, of course not. They probably gonna get five a piece. I think, it, to be honest, it's going to be a slap on the wrist. I and you're so. right. It's probably going to be a five apiece. Yeah, like five apiece, you know what I'm saying? They probably, and they, and they're not going to serve the full five anyway, so, because just, like, whatever. Like, get your ass But, you know, you never know what mood niggas is in. True. They can make them, uh, make them, it, depending on how bad they were with shit or how aggressive they were with shit, they might fucking throw the book at their ass. Yeah. If not... Probably a slap on the wrist. I mean, uh, uh, basically, if people get their money back. That's probably that's probably the only thing. Oh, like, that's just 
Yeah, they get their money. They probably got they got they, they, they restitution gonna be hiding the motherfucker though. Oh, restitution gonna be in the million. So that nigga gonna have to write some hit singles in. Yeah, he gonna have to pay that shit off. He gonna he, he gonna have to pull a Mexico nigga sign a deal. Shut the fuck up. Just to go ahead and pay for all your shit. Yeah. All right. So what else we got? You want to get into this other list? Yeah. Let, you know what? <laughs> Before we get into that list, I got one more list for you. Okay. What's this list you was talking about? Um. Hold on. Let me find it. Uh, <laughs> the giggle. Dog, I'm laughing, man, because they was tripping. I was watching a, a clip on uh on YouTube about Family Feud, <laughs> and Steve Harvey's face the whole time. He's like, man, what the fuck? So they was trying to guess. They had like they went to 50 people and they talked to the people like you know the top 100 people or some shit, whatever the fuck, however the Family Feud do it. Mm-hmm. The top 10 greatest rappers of all time, <laughs> and I'm gonna start from. Well, actually, it's eight. I'm going to start from eight to one. <laughs> Number eight is Jay-Z. <laughs> okay. Number nine is 50 Cent. I mean, number seven is 50 Cent, excuse me. Okay. Number six is Notorious B.I.G. Number five is L.O. Cool J. Now, here's where this shit get wicked. Okay. Number four is Dr. Dre. Huh? <laughs> okay, okay. Number three is Eminem. Number two is your boy Tupac. Wow. And number one is Snoop Dogg. <laughs> and what's the name of this list again? It's Family Feud. Like, <laughs> let me see if I can find the shit. Because <laughs> whatever you said, like, the, the greatest rappers, according to the people at Family Feud, the people that they interview on the street about that shit. And these niggas put Snoop Dogg at number one? And I know why they put Snoop Dogg at number one, because he's the most recognizable rapper out there. Mm. So what was they using pictures or some shit like how? No, they no they was, I, they was asking random people. They was like, you know what I'm saying? And random. Why wh- white people? And <laughs> okay. that's because Snoop at number one, nigga. That's random white people. Jackie Schneider's nigga. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Yeah. That's the name of this episode too. The Jackie Schneider. Definitely. <laughs> 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 they, asked, they asked a bunch of Jackie Schneiders, nigga. And they said Snoop Dogg number one. I'm like, yeah, because Snoop is the most recognizable rapper ever. So you, I mean, amen. And they yeah, love and right. they love and they love that man. Oh, look, he rolled up another blunt. That's our Snoopy. <laughs> it's so crazy that out of all of the... He is the most recognizable, like, household name. And, no, and nobody, and he's, and he's a rolling 20 crip, and nobody will fuck with him. <laughs> like, like, that nigga, like, I mean, he don't bother nobody. He, he, he's probably... He mind his business. He just get high. He get high, have fun. Like, that nigga just be everywhere. Snoop will be in Iceland. They're, oh, my God, it's Snoop Dogg. And they will know who the fuck he is, so... That's crazy. Yeah, so, I mean... <laughs> so, to be, like, the most... Re- like, you are a nigga from the hood. <laughs> like, can you imagine? And you are a nigga he's from a rolling, the He's a rolling hood. 20 crip from right. Long Beach. From the hood and nobody, a nobody from the hood is the most recognizable rapper in 2024. That's crazy. If they don't let you know, niggas can do whatever the fuck they want with their life. Yeah, I mean, like, any, basically, with that, it just shows you that anything is fucking possible. You can yeah. do whatever. You could do whatever the fuck you want to do in life. That shit don't make you feel like you could just get up and go do some shit. This nigga Snoopy the murder case, and he has been the most recognizable person ever. Doing shows with Martha Stewart. He's not even a convicted felon. Martha Stewart is a convicted that nigga felon. Used to have a silk press <laughs> with curls, nigga. This nigga's over here playing flag football. He's playing all star baseball and shit, all star celebrity baseball and Fucking shit. Fucking family movies. Family movies everywhere and shit, man. Nigga still, th- nigga still rep his set to the fullest. Nigga still go out to his set and help. Nigga still go out to his neighborhood and help niggas out and shit. It's insane, man. But yeah, that's that was Family Feud's list. So. <laughs> and you said they had Dr. Dre on there. <laughs> Number four. <laughs> I wouldn't even put like. I think I, you know, and I think this list is going off of people that they can recognize, or just come up with off the top of their head. Yeah, that just people that they recognize as far as because you know these the people that they know they don't listen to fucking rap like that, man. They probably like rapper. They when you mention the rapper, like you can go to any white person. Who, 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 who name a rapper? Name a rapper. Snoop Dogg. Because <laughs> it's just it's such a his name is Snoop Dogg. It's Snoop Dogg. <laughs> Snoop Dogg. Snoop Dogg. Tupac. Eminem and the top four. So yes. Eminem. He's a white rapper. Yes, they're gonna recognize Eminem. They're gonna recognize Eminem. I guess. 
I mean, I don't hell to him, but I guess, nigga, I guess. That shit was funny. I had to just, I posted that shit on Facebook. Niggas like, what the fuck? I'm like, nigga, Family Feud, nigga, what you think? Look, even, look, even, because <laughs> they was naming Drake, Ken, Kendrick Lamar, Jay Collins. They don't know who the fuck them people is, nigga. Yeah. <laughs> Like they barely, they barely know who they mentioned Nas. I'm like, nigga, they don't know who Nas is. Yeah, dog. They don't know who Nas is. Like, nah, nigga, you're like, nah, nigga, you better go by popularity for sure. That's how you gonna win that one, nigga. And it just, like, you should have seen Steve Harvey's face. He's like, what the fuck? He, and then like, he like, he said, "Hello, Cool J, man." Like, that's a bad man right there. He's like, that's a bad man right there. And he just, you know, "Hello, Cool J." I forgot you mentioned him. Yeah, "Hello, Cool J" name is on that list too. So yeah. <laughs> All right, man. What's this other list we got, man? Oh, you know, because we're a podcast. Um, if you follow Wealth on Instagram, most people do. Um, Wealth dropped the most subscribed podcast in the world on Spotify. So not YouTube. In, in, not in, in, in the world. In the, in the world. world. Not just, yeah. So, because so, I, I can tell you right now, I only know two of these names on this fucking list. Terrible. So, number 10 was Serial Killers with 2.2 million subscribers. Never heard of that podcast. So, Serial Killers, um, they kind of, like, go through history and facts of serial killers. Like, nifty, fun facts, shit like that. If you're into, like, crime shit, like, like crime documentaries on Netflix, that's the show for you. And before you, go, before you keep going, because... It's interesting because there's a YouTube channel that I watch, right? Mm -hmm. He ranks every, like, famous, notorious killer's mm -hmm. last meal. He will make the meal and then rank that I shit. I think you told me about that. That shit is, I'm going to send you that page. It's so fucking interesting. I don't think I want to know some shit like that. It's so interesting. I'm like, it just, you go into the mind of a killer and you just be looking at this shit. Like, like one guy requested a pot of dirt, but they didn't give it to him because he was going to eat the dirt and try to recur recur some some Haitian shit. They didn't give it to him, so they gave him. A, he gave him, he had like a pitted olive. That's what all he wanted. Like it's it's weird. It's 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 interesting. If you watch crime shows, you'll probably like shit like that. Hmm. But, yeah. Number nine, on purpose with Jay Shetty with two point three million subscribers. I don't know who that is, um, but I'm definitely curious to look into him. Um, number eight, The Daily with two point six million subscribers. Um, I've heard of the show. I've never checked it out. But now I'm very curious. Um, then you got number seven with Huberman Lab. Three million subscribers. I don't know who Huberman Lab is. I don't know who the fuck that is. Um, but shout out to him. I, clearly I need to know. Number six, Anything Goes with Emma Chamberlain. 3.1 million subscribers. Shout out to you, Emma. Number five, Stuff You Should Know, 3.2 million uh, fi followers. I think that's a, like a self-improvement mm -hmm. um, podcast, and I feel like I'm missing out, and I definitely want to check that out. Number four, Crime Junkie. So another, this goes to show you that niggas love death, murder, and fucking yeah. all that it, shit. Because it, we, 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 we are very morbid people. We are. We are very morbid people. Um. Crime Junkie has 3.3 million subscribers, two women that do this show. Um, I definitely want to see what this is about. I don't know if I'm into, like, crime podcasts, but I definitely love a crime documentary. Yeah, I think you'll, I think you'll love a crime podcast. I think, you, I think you'll love it. It's something cre creepy about, like, listening to someone talk. Like, it, like, like I said, it's, just, it's, it's a lot of morbid curiosity amongst us. Mm -hmm. Like... As you can tell, this is why we this is why we are like a very depressed era right now. Mm, I can see that. Yeah. So what else you got? Number three, I actually am one of these three point seven million subscribers. Of course you are. Call her daddy. I do like her show. Jesus Christ. She's funny. I love her voice. I bet you do. But um and I like the the name of her show. Like that's what originally attracted me to it. I was like, what the fuck is this call her daddy shit? But I do like it. Um, number two, TED Talks Daily. So like, um, yeah, yeah. Like everyone, is, yeah. Like who is not subscribed? One of my favorite, you know, my good friend Eric Bischoff. I'm gonna keep saying my good friend Eric Bischoff. He had a TED Talk. <laughs> Shout out to my dog Eric Bischoff, man. Good friend, good friend of the network. Good friend of the network. So 
so they have five million subscribers. Yep, and we already, I already know what number one is, nigga. I, 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 nigga, I didn't even have to look. Like, at nigga, like, nigga, like, like when I seen the lit, when they see that, I even clicked the lit. I didn't click the link. Yet. I'm like, number one is Joe Rogan. It has to be fourteen point five million subscribers. It's like when everybody be calling Joe Budden the pod father. No, 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 Pod-man. no. Joe Pod-man. Rogan is the pod father. Mm, positively, one of the Joes, but not that one. Mm-hmm. That nigga didn't even make the list. How interesting. Anyway, um, yeah, that's the top 10 most subscribed podcast on Spotify. <sighs> on Spotify. Spotify. Remember that, people. Spotify, which is which is pretty much the biggest thing for podcasting right now. Mm-hmm. Um, and Joe Rogan, yeah, Joe Rogan is number one because he deserves that shit. Like, oh, yeah, absolutely. I, you know what I'm saying? And honestly and truthfully, like I always said this shit, and I said one of these days I'm going to make it happen. I want G to be on the Joe Rogan podcast. I want him to be on the Joe Rogan podcast because I He's think gotta be on there for something. Yeah, like no, because like you know what I'm saying like like I, like it's gonna make it my goal for him to be on there. Like he could be on there for like hey, he doing what the fuck did I miss podcast? You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Have him jump on there, and honestly, truth, I need to call him anyway because this Joe Biden shit opened up a lot of war, opened up a Man, lot I of worms. This is I feel like that's when y'all did should you, be doing. Did you did you see the uh did you see the John McAfee tweet that he sent out in 2020 before he died? No. Oh man, hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> this is this is peak. Don't open up this shit. This is peak. What the fuck did I miss? So he sent out a tweet on he sent out a tweet on July 18th, 2020. Mm-hmm. He said Russia's Russia's first time traveler has returned. Guess what he said? In September Biden's med- medically diagnosed as unfit for office and quits. They discovered the DNC has legal power to choose a replacement without a national vote. Weird, huh? You'll never guess who they choose. He never said who they was going to choose. And he died later on that year. Hmm. <laughs> Look at you. You, you. I can hear the wheels in your I can hear the wheels in your head turning right now too. Like, what the fuck? That's very interesting. Oh, man, look, John McAfee, man. Uh hmm. man, we could do man, we could do a whole show. Man, we could do a whole episode of what the fuck did I mess on John McAfee? Like, but probably. Yeah, it's crazy. But no, nah, back to that though. Um I mean shit. It, I I don't I haven't heard of none of these podcasts except for the first except for the uh number one or number two. You gotta get into it. I mean, yeah. Definitely I'm, if you're a woman, you're not a woman. Yeah, I'm definitely not a woman. All her daddy is the pod for you. I think I'm gonna I'm think I'm gonna get more into uh, Joe Rogan. Uh, Cause I just like cause his shit. It like it's informative, but his shit. It's is, like, is, it it depends on who he's. It's inform. It's with. informative chaos. Yeah. It's informative chaos. I mean, shit. When he had Terrence Howard on there, that was informative chaos <laughs> to the core. <laughs> Cause I don't know what the fuck. Yeah. Oh man, but yeah, Joe Rogan, man, that's the pie father. It's not Joe Budden. It's Joe Rogan. That's the pie. <laughs> like just to reiterate. Just to reiterate, it's Joe Rogan because. Joe, but like niggas, niggas like us wish we could have that many subscribers as Joe Rogan does. Yeah, yeah, for real, for real. Even bad comes with that. Yeah, it's a lot. Yeah, because like, lot of yeah, a lot of responsibility. And Joe Rogan, and, and Joe Rogan has definitely been irresponsible with that shit, talking about the COVID vaccines and all that other shit too. So that's a whole. It's very irresponsible for that shit, but yeah. But shout out to them, man. Yeah, keep going. Mm-hmm. Oh my god! <laughs> That's a long fucking applause. You know, you just hold it down and just keep going. But Lord all right, god. what we got next, man? Um, let's get into new music and music we've been listening to. Like, let's just combine it all together. All right, there we go. <clears throat> so, what dropped this week? <sighs> Apparently, a lot of people like Childish Gambino's album. So I seen it on my things I should listen to list on Spotify, mm-hmm. and I said, "Fuck no." Yeah, I'm not. I'm not. I'm. I'm not. I'm, like, I'm, not a I, fan. And I'm not a fan. Here's the thing, and he very well could have dropped a single, and I just didn't see it. Mm-hmm. But it was just kind of like he hasn't been making any. I don't like when artists aren't making any noise and then they just drop music. Yeah. Like you come out of nowhere, like Beyonce with an album, but it's just like you don't give any like no social media like. Post like nigga, give me something. Give me, give me some samples of a song you putting out. Like, give me something. Well, like right now, I didn't know why G dropped a single with Lil Yachty and Babyface Ray. Oh, I didn't know about I'm, that. I'm gonna go listen to that. Um, it wasn't either. Gotcha. I'm gonna go listen to that. Uh, 
I did listen to Big Sean's album that was leaked. Mm-hmm. It was just a Big Sean. It was another Big Sean album. I'm not taking your opinion for it because you and Reggie didn't like fucking Hall of Fame, and I felt like y'all. I had, it was. I didn't like that album. I didn't like that album. But you, you, I mean, but you know, in each his song. Yeah. I felt like it was a great body of work. It was the last finally famous album. I really think that it was. It was. A good album. Yeah, but you know, I listen. I listen to this album. Um, started off, started off really fucking strong, man. You gonna hate, you gonna hate track number two, by the way, because mm. Nas on it. Oh, positive. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, I did listen to that. Uh, like I said, production wise, fucking fire. That's what I hear. Production wise, is fire. Hit boy, man. Look, Hit boy might be your producer. Hit boy has been. He been lacing niggas. He been lacing niggas with some fire. Him and Alchemist. Mm, so I, hear. I, I fuck with that. Um. I've been listening to the Eminem album still. Mm. The Eminem album. Every time I every That's not no, necessarily me, new music. Um But no, nah, before before you go on, the Eminem album, when you listen to Eminem, the, the music on that shit, it just sounds like evil Dr. Robotnik music. Like he just see this nigga tinkering on shit, like planning shit to happen about the get ready to set. Like like he like you just you the music you, like, you play that shit in the background when you over there fixing building your doomsday device, you know? Mm-hmm. That's what that shit sound That's like. That's what it me. sounds like. Yeah, I'll take your word for it. <laughs> I'll take your word for it. Um, Marshall he did drop an album. Say so who did? JT. Yeah, so I heard that she did a song for the Barbs or some shit like that. Like it sounded like some shit Nicki Minaj would make, and it pissed a lot of people off. A song for the Barbs. It's like it's not like a song that she made. Like 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 Nicki Minaj would make, and it heard it pissed a lot of people off about that shit. But did you listen to her album? I did. What you think about it? Um. Oh shit. No, 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 no. I, I thought long and hard about this. Mm-hmm. I have to remember that this is a solo body of work, and this is her first solo body of work. So I can't judge it as this would be. Because let me see. What do the City Girls have? Three albums. Yeah. I can't judge her like this would be her fourth album. Yeah. I mean, it's her first solo project, so. Right. Mm-hmm. It gave mixtape. Not going to lie. It gave, it gave mixtape. And to be honest, <sighs> I wanted to see a little bit more evolvement. I don't want to see a fourth album rapper. Talking about selling drugs and stuff in their bubble pills. Yeah, it's like you passed all that now. Yeah. Yeah. I don't want you talking about all your mug shots. Yeah. And how you used to be in store stealing and being locked up. And it's just like, if you want to talk about those past experiences, but in a boosting mode, I don't want to hear that from you. I want to hear about your trips, how much money you spend, the clothes you wear, the food you eat. You know, the bitches you be hanging with. I want to hear about that shit. I don't want to hear about all this other shit that you talked about at all. Like, at all. No, I, I hear you on that. I hear you on that. That's like, that would be like Dipset putting out an album talking about shit they did 20 years ago. The whole album. Why are we talking about this shit? This ain't been relevant to y'all for 20 years. That's true, too. Why like you want her, like you like, you want her to make grown yeah, music. Yes. I want you to like right now music. Make make rap about your life right now. Right. But having her rap about and listen to an album that was about her, her past life. Okay, you can talk about your past life and find a, a creative way like, to like make it sound like like don't do the whole project like that. That's what it felt. Oh, okay. Yeah. It felt like the whole Fucking so like brick talk. What do you think that's about? Oh, her moving bricks and shit. But it's like D- selling drugs, helping sell drugs, being a mule to sell drugs. Like I'm like okay, pass on that. Oh, uh, with DJ Khaled wasn't fucking bad. I did fuck with that song. Serving. What do you think that was? About? <laughs> of course, she, time, time she's trying to go to Gucci Man route for a minute. <laughs> um, '90s baby. Maybe that's the song everybody was talking about. Mm-hmm. Um, 
and it wasn't for me. Uncle Al wasn't for me. Sideways was straight. Of course, everybody loves OK. OK was the best song on the album. That's, that's, that's not good. It was the best song on the album. It was, good. but OK, OK is a great song right now, especially with mm-hmm. her having Jeezy on the remix. Everything else was just like lackluster. But it wasn't a terrible album. Like you just want you just want her to, I just wanted more. You just want her to be like be more herself than trying to talk right. about some shit that she like. But mm. that was the hard part of like not judging her, like not making it like, okay, this is her first, fourth album. She should but if you look at it as this is my first album as a single artist by myself, just kind of doing whatever and seeing what sticks, then for that it was a good album. That's probably what I think. That's probably what she was doing because you know she's been doing like a lot of different. Yeah, she's things. trying. She's coming into herself as a sing, as a solo artist. So that's she's doing. She's it. doing what a lot of other artists should be doing instead of just trying to go on tours. Playing with shit instead yes. of trying to go on tours Playing with all shit, of a sudden. Trying smaller venues, um, and it's just like at first it was laughable, but it was like now it's like okay, actually. This shit work for her. Because now you have to build your fan base as just you. Mm-hmm. It ain't the city girls no more. It's just you. So now I got to come out and, you know, test the water. Yeah. And I, and, I, and I think that was smart. Like, whoever's behind her right now, whoever, like, her management, they are doing a great job as far as that is concerned. Cause they I trying like the cover art was fire. Yeah. Because they really trying to, like, gauge what will be her next move and everything. So it's like, now we're going to test these waters and shit. And they just not throwing her out there to the wolves and shit. Right. And trying to have her fighting for her fucking life like that. Like a lot of these labels are doing with these artists right now. Man, what? Which is not making sense because. So let me ask you this. Does Sexy Red cancel her, con- cancel her tour or not? Um, no. Mm. I meant to talk about that. She was trolling pretty much. No, it's so it was a rumor. Her mm. tour was not canceled. Um, here's what I think is gonna happen though. Smaller venues? Yes. Mm-hmm. So what it is that I notice now, because of this fucking ticket master bullshit. Um so for example, I don't know if you know who uh Joe Coy is. Yeah, I know what that is. A huge Filipino a stand-up comedian. This nigga sells out arenas. And I noticed he's doing a show in Detroit, and it was for the Masonic Temple. And I was like, hmm, why is a nigga that sells out arenas doing a show at the Masonic Temple? Now, I didn't know that as of late, now the Masonic Temple will set up for seating. Because from what I was aware of I thought it was just standing so when they do concerts they leave it as standing room but when they do things that require seating they have seating I didn't know that Mm -hmm. so um it's booked for the Masonic Temple and I said oh I know what they're gonna do once it sells out they're They're gonna upgrade it to the Fox to the Fox yep so that's what they're doing now so when the um what is that podcast that me and Jason like the two um, the two dudes. Um, I forgot their name. You sent me the link to it. Well, anyway, yeah. they um, they have a tour called Call Me Daddy, right. like a live podcast tour. And they did the same thing. Started the Masonic. Once it sold out, they upgraded it to the Fox and your tickets transferred. So that's what the people who like don't like, kind of like a JT thing, testing the waters. I don't know how Michigan is. Because at the first time, I'm like, that nigga got a terrible fucking... Uh, you know, team, if they fucking book in the Masonic, but I get it. I don't know how big I am in Detroit. Let me start with a smaller venue and go from there. And then blow up, then take it from there, yep. What I think they're doing with this is starting, is doing the backwards route, which isn't a bad idea, but at the same time... It makes your artist look bad. Yeah, because mm-hmm. it's like we're going to notice that you downgraded to a smaller venue. Yeah, it, like, it makes your artist look bad, for real. And I know you're trying to lock them big venues in cause, because yes, they get locked up because- pretty quickly. And I hate that we didn't talk about this sooner, but Sexy Red is not a headliner. No, she's not. I don't give a fuck what you say or how much you support her. She is not a headliner. Does she have enough songs to headline a tour? Almost. Almost. But y'all have to remember that these bitches put out two minute and 34 second songs now. If you can do a whole concert with seven two minute and 34 second songs, all hail to you. But you're going to need more than that to headline a concert. So it's probably going to be like, it, 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 she can do a Sexy Red in France. 
That's probably what they should have did anyway. Um, but Sexy Red is more the artist you bring on to your tour, not a headliner. Like I don't care how big y'all make this bitch look, she's not a headliner yet. You want to know who? You want to know? And it's gonna piss you off. But you know who did it smart? Who? Megan Glorilla with that shit. I don't know how they did it. Don't give a fuck either. <laughs> um, <laughs> cause I legit didn't fucking pay attention. Yeah, they did that shit. They they've been going on tour together and shit. It's like you gotta have someone kind of like there. Cause you it's know? like. <clears throat> Megan has lost a lot of her fan base, but still has a fan base. And Glorilla has a very growing fan yep. base. And so it is very much so a Meg and Friends thing. So, like, really would have been smart for her is... A sexy red and ice spice. That could have worked. Because that's the same demographic. Yeah, that could have worked. You know what I'm saying? It could have been a, a sexy red and maybe a Cardi B tour. Maybe. Maybe that. <clears throat> Or since Sexy Red and the Nicki Minaj. Hell no. Yeah, that probably wouldn't have worked. That's work. not, Nicki that Minaj is a headliner in, her, in itself. She don't even But no, I'm saying, like, had Nicki Minaj do the tour, but have speaking special guest Sexy Red. Yeah, I guess. That could have worked, but, you know. I feel like that's too little for her, though. Yeah, too little for uh, Nicki. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but, no, Sexy Red and Ice Spice, I like that one. I like that one. I think yeah, that, that would have made sense. That like could have duo for them. Too. Yeah, and like sick with sex with Ice Spice dropping her album that she needed. And the Ice Spice has the album coming out. Speaking of that, how you feel about that album? Well, um, what you thinking? What you think? How you think that shit gonna do? Like, what you what your what your like? So my thing is, and somebody um, that I saw left a comment under her post about the album because she dropped the track list. Um, most of the songs are already out. That's the, <sighs> like, that's the, they, that was the wild have, part. They to have me. to stop the labels. As they and do. I didn't even look at the whole track list, but like. I already know what they're doing. They're trying to get, they trying to get a gold status in the album, uh, a platinum status for having all that, having all them songs on there already who got already all them big ass streams so and shit. it's 10 songs. Fat Butt, already out. Mm-hmm. Um, I can't even read the fuck. Oh, number eight, Thank You to Shit. Already out. Number nine, Give Me the Light. Already out. Did it first. Number six, Already out. Which leaves one, two, three, four, five, maybe, yeah, five songs. Five or six. So half the album is already out. And that's just going off the songs that I know. I don't know. Because I'm going to tell you right now, I'm going to tell you right now, because them songs already got solid streaming numbers. They're going to use that to put on an album. And then when the album, they say the album go platinum or gold or whatever the fuck, mm-hmm. that'll be why. I mean. Smart strategy. It's not a terrible one. And then you see she doing her promo work with uh, Paris Hilton. Smart. Tap into that. You know what I'm saying? She. I, well, I will say is that girl learned to cross over, and I am not mad at it. And I'm gonna tell, and that that's the N- Nicki Minaj crossover shit. You know what I'm saying? That's what it looked like because Nicki Minaj was crossing over like a motherfucker too. And I do. So her tour has already started. Mm-hmm. Um. And I find it interesting that she started overseas. Smart. She'll be in Detroit August 9th. What's, what where she where is it gonna be in Detroit? It don't well on here it don't say, but I'm about to look because now I need to know. If they do Little Caesars Arena, I'm gonna be like, yeah, no. I think she could. I think she could sell out Little Caesars Arena. Cause she yeah, cause she crossing into both markets, crossing into different markets and shit. Taylor Swift. Yeah. That's yeah. She, what did, what do we call it? The the uh, Drake uh, stimulus package. She got the, the mm, Taylor Swift. The, Taylor, the <laughs> D white woman stimulus package. <laughs> like. All right, let me see where her tour is at. Because the tickets are on sale. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Tell okay, me. album comes out in four days. Yep. So I'm wondering with her touring already, because she started touring July 4th right. overseas. Mm-hmm. Is she touring with the whole album or some of the songs that are already out in those songs? I think she's touring with some of the songs that's already out. And then once the album drops, that's when she's probably going to be performing the whole album and shit. So that's probably why she went overseas oh, first. Nigga. What up? <laughs> Come on, man. It's quiet, man. What, what happened? Where you think? Okay, just give me three good guesses. Oh, man. 
probably one of them amphitheaters, I'm thinking. Come on. Give me, give me, give me just three good guesses. Little Caesars Arena. Okay. The amphitheater. Um, I'll say the Fox. That's your three? Mm-hmm. The Fillmore. That's interesting. You know what the tickets start at? How much? So, second row, standing room, Y2K, early entry VIP package, $187. Main floor tickets, $75.50. Oh, she about to pro up. She about to make some money off of this shit. And that's if... uh, That's if um, Ticketmaster don't do their thing. Mm-hmm. That's actually, because if that shit sells out, they can go next door to the Fox. Yeah, you know what? Smart management team. Yep, standard tickets, anywhere from seven, from 64, my bad. Mm-hmm. 60, 64, 64, Jesus, I can't fucking talk today. To like eighty four, eighty six dollars, or I can get VIP for one eighty seven. I'm going. All right, check the sexy res ticket prices. Ooh. See how much that shit is. I think I think we about to tell. I think we about to see what's the difference is right here. Her real name is Janae Nero Weary. Yeah. That's nasty. All right. Hers. This can't be. This can't be. What were we saying? Grand Rapids? This can't be right. Come on, come on for sexy red. <laughs> Hold on now. Hold on. Michigan, Michigan, Michigan. Yeah, it's in Grand Rapids, nigga. The Van Andel Arena. Oh, yeah, that's a terrible move. Yeah, what the fuck is her? Yeah, like. And you know what's going to happen? Here's what's going to happen. Because that concert is September 10th. Mm-hmm. She's in Columbus on the 14th. Niggas is going to go to Columbus instead of going to Grand Rapids. <sighs> it's her management, man. That's what's going to happen. It's her management. I haven't seen a rapper go to Grand Rap- Rapids for a fucking tour. Her tickets... Um, Start on the floor, one twenty nine fifty, but seating you go a little higher up there, about ninety nine dollars. They start at ninety nine. They start at ninety nine. Mm-hmm. It's her management. And it's, when I tell it's, you, it's her fucking management. So a lot of sexy red tickets are already sold. It's a lot of fucking tickets on here. But it's like, yeah, I'm looking now. It's a lot of fucking tickets. Yeah, that is it's her management, man. They are setting her up. She need to fire her management. That management team got to get fired because they sitting her. They are setting her up for failure, dog. It's a lot of fucking tickets, man. Well, we'll see. Man, that's crazy. She look, that shit looking like AEW. That shit looking like AEW ticket sales right now. We shall see. That's crazy. That's crazy. Yeah, and um, I wonder how. Yeah, and I know I like, spice shit probably selling right now too a little bit. Yeah, her it's it's not a lot of tickets left for her show. Yeah, that here there's my thing. And you gotta think about it, August is around the corner. You gotta have a good management team, man. You gotta have a good management. Like because th- th- the management will make the break make or break of your career. Yeah. It will definitely make or break of your career. And right now it's This is cute, that little countdown. This is cute. This oh, is cute. Uh, <laughs> This is cute. So yeah, that's bad. See, that, I'm telling you, man, management. Like, look, look at the presentation they're doing for this girl right now. See, this is what I, this is why I fuck with Spotify. So they actually show you the songs that are already released mm-hmm. on their fucking track list. So yeah, yeah. Apple do the same. Yeah, yeah, Apple do the same thing. I do that. Okay. Yeah, they do the same thing. I wouldn't thing. know, but um, yeah. See, that's that. See, that that's the thing. Proper artist management. Whoever Sexy Red's management is. They fuck. They dropping the ball big time. They're gonna be fired by the end of this year. They're gonna be fired. once this tour is over. They can fire. She gonna have a new management team. That's cute. They're gonna, she gonna have a new management team because what what they doing for Ice Spice? That's what you need as an artist. You need that. Yeah, 
Most definitely. They keep her out of the interviews. Mm -hmm. What I will say, and I still haven't gotten through the whole thing, is her being on the shop. Mm -hmm. I think that was good for her. For a sexy red? Yeah. Yeah, that was good for her. Have her there, have her there sitting next to Andre 3000 and shit? Yeah. And actually have... I wonder if he knew who she was. He, pro he probably just found out right then and there. Because I, I, she was in a good room. Yeah, sure. and you got to do that for her. You got to put her in these spaces like that. You know what I'm saying? She got, she like, I understand that's her appeal is how fucking ghetto she is, but you got to, you got to kind of get her, you got to kind of get her in these rooms with these people and shit. I'm not saying she's going to be the next Snoop Dogg. Uh, as, what? Did it first with Central C has 20 million streams. Central C is a big name out there in the UK. Like, that's what? why, that's why when I sent you that clip, I'm like, nigga, are we just late or? <laughs> no, nah, no, nah, like, like, <laughs> some of us are late, man. But I want. But I'm gonna tell you. I'm gonna tell you this is how I knew Central C was a big name. Hmm. Drake the fucking freestyle with this nigga. That shit combination. Central. That was Central C. Oh. That was Central C right there. Drake knew what the. Drake knew what the. Cause you know Drake gonna attach himself to people that's blowing the fuck up. Of course. He attached himself to him, and it's like, all right, we see what's happening here. We see what's happening. He's a big name over there in the UK right now. I'm trying to decide if I want to go to this motherfucking concert. Shit, go, nigga. It's the day before my son's surgery. Oh, yeah. It's in like two weeks. We'll see. Yeah. I'll say fuck with it. You might have a good time in that bitch. I might. Especially since I ain't got to go to Grand Rapids. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, that's interesting where we're going to go with that. So, we'll figure it out. Um, any, any other topics else we got? Or that's it? Oh, right. Oh, yeah, I'm moment. On the show. Um, <laughs> all right, so you sent me an interesting clip the other day. And what's funny is, is me and my aunt had um, were talking to her daughter mm -hmm. about the same fucking thing. So aunt picked out my moment with Miracle. Which is random. It was. All right, so let me scroll up here. There's so much other slander happening in our inbox, our little group message. Oh, yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. But I'm, y'all do the same shit in group chats, too. All right. I'm pretty sure I'm in a lot of y'all motherfuckers' group chats right now. What's happening to club culture, but the girlies are not oh, wearing yeah, heels in the clubs anymore. And as a 34-year-old, I know I don't look my age, but as a 34-year-old... She did, though, by the way. Do we need to come out of retirement and teach the girls how to wear heels? Or, like, what heels you need to shop for when going out in the club? Because the amount of flats and sandals that I saw, it just, like... Part of the thrill of going to the club is dancing on the couch in your heels. Mm -hmm. You gotta figure out how to, how to strengthen those ankles so you don't break them. Like, how to maneuver. Like, it's a rite of passage. I feel like you don't appreciate wearing a flat if you aren't dancing on the couch in the club. I don't know, y'all. There's just something about a cute little heel. You know? You just gotta... We gotta figure it out. We gotta bring heel culture back to the club. Now, you see the heels that she was wearing, right? Mm-hmm. What's your opinion on that? So, she played it safe because it is a heel. It is a heel, nonetheless. Um... It is a heel. <laughs> now, the heel that I was thinking of, that's how I got immediately to tell she was a few years younger than me. Mm -hmm. um, the heel I'm thinking of is stilettos, because that's that song when we was, you know, wanting to be in clubs and actually getting in the club. That's not fit she had on. Yeah, no. Nah. Yeah. So I think um, right message, wrong messenger. She looks like she's about 40, though. Yeah, when she said yeah, I'm 34 I'm, and I don't look it, I'm like, nah. Yeah, you, you look older. You, you look, definitely. I mean, mm. in that outfit, in that setup, yes, she does look older. She looks like a like 45, 50 year old woman trying to look 34. Yeah, is what she looks. So, um, I very much agree. Um, I don't go to clubs often. When I do go to clubs and I don't see girls wearing heels, it's kind of like this shit is weird. Because when we went out, that was really the only time you needed to wear heels, nigga. Like, you wear heels to the club. That was how you elevated your outfit. Now, I don't know that men care. I don't know that y'all care if a bitch is wearing heels in a club. I doubt it. 
You got some that do. Um, like if a bitch wearing a cute ass dress and then you look down and she got on flats. Yeah, that'd be, you know, that'd be kind of awkward a little bit. You know what I'm saying? Like, and plus, you know what I'm saying? Like, a lot of women this day and age don't know how to walk in heels. No, they don't. And that's and that's an issue right there in itself that I've noticed. Um, because, I, you know what I'm saying? I, you know what I'm saying? If, I, if, if you, it's a turn on for me to see you walking in heels and you know how to walk in a bitch. It's a turn on. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And we don't see that shit a lot. No, not anymore. Mm-mm. I feel like um, what fucked the game up was some little flats. Yeah. That shit fucked the game up. Because we could look dressy and not have to be in high heels. That shit fucked us up. Them little fucking doll flats. That shit fucked us up. Like, you just don't even know. Like, niggas to this wear, day. You wearing them flats looking like fucking Mortal Kombat shoes and shit. shit. Like, you know what I'm saying? Looking like Katana. Or and it's like now when I look at them, like, like no bullshit. I had to make space in my closet this weekend. And, like, I have containers. Because my you, I didn't give away over half my Harachis. I kept key few colors. Mm-hmm. I, I kept maybe, like, 10 pairs. 10, 10 Ten or ten to twelve pairs, and it was like sentimental, sentimental value ones and like odd colors I cut. I found fucking five containers of like each container had about three of them fucking flats in there, and I was like, yeah, I don't want to wear these shit no more. Like not how I see, like on the outside looking in with them shits on. I'm like, why the fuck was this a thing? Like, why was this a trend? It was just comfortable. You know what I'm saying? Because I know a lot of women complain about the heels hurting their feet and shit. fucking our feet up. But that but, was the point. That was the point. You went through the pain to look sexy. Because it's nothing like that shimmy with the clink. With the, like, it was I mean, like I, it just just to, just to see you walk in them, you know what I'm saying? Like It's appealing. It's appealing like a motherfucker. Like, and, you know, and you don't see that anymore. No. You know? Like you go out to the club, nigga. They motherfuckers wearing motherfuckers they wearing J's. They weren't they wearing J's. You don't have, nigga. They I'm like fucking panda dunks. Like, That's you, what the fuck they weren't. They weren't panda. You wearing J's. You, I'm like, damn, you got those. Like, nigga, I ain't get those. You know what I'm saying? Like, it was. A, they are wearing. It was a girl. It was a girl, man. We was at a bar, nigga. She walked in with the off white, uh, the off white uh, Jordan fours, nigga. And I'm like, damn, one of them bitches. Like, I could. They, they just didn't have my size. And I'm like, damn. I'm like, she got those. I'm like, fuck. You know what I'm saying? It's strange, it's, man. It's, and I get it, girls are sneaker heads too, but I just feel like certain setting you wear certain shoes. Man, I need you. I need you to see. I need you, like, man, we out to eat, man. Throw, throw on some heels, man. For real, yeah. going to a nice ass restaurant. Like, you got those. Yes. You got those heels on, man. And I'm trying. I told. And even and, 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 and even then, with Nick, I'm gonna say this about men too. Like nigga, we gotta we gotta be better at that shit too. Oh, it's we, shoes. We, yeah, we can't. Like nigga, like you gotta like nigga, you have all the sneakers in the world, nigga, but you gotta have a you have a nice couple um, pair of dress shoes. Couple pair of dress shoes, nigga. Like you can't go in there hard look hard bottoms. Hard bottoms. You can't really be going into these places wearing um hoochie shorts and shit like that too and everything. Like nigga, nah, bro, you gotta you gotta dress that I, shit up. I will say at Trick Trick's birthday party, they were turning a lot of men around. Some niggas was coming like half dressed up and then sneakers and it was like you can't do that nigga you ain't got a pair of loafers at home no, and, like, like nah man like and, and it's crazy too because even then like even then as I'm getting older because you know I'm a sneaker head man but even then I'm looking at I've been looking at dress shoes I've been looking at dress shoes like nigga like you know like hey I'm about to go out to a nice restaurant nigga I want to go in there with no Jordan no Jordan like, ones what are y'all niggas wearing to funerals and shit like I'll just like what <sighs> wedding hey man look niggas gotta grow up man you gotta grow up, like nigga. We not, like nigga. We about to be forty, nigga. I ain't about to, like nigga. You, I understand it's comfortable, nigga. But like nigga, you gotta have some shit that's gonna look good, nigga. That look presentable. You know what I'm saying? Like you gotta be a, like, even at my even at my work, my work, my old work job, like they, the the little the little Christmas parties and some shit like that, nigga. Come in that bitch, man. Come in that bitch, yeah, impressive. Yeah, come in that bitch, impressive, nigga. Like yeah. people like nigga that coat, nigga coming in there with that coat on and shit, nigga. Niggas ask me like, where you get that coat from? That fucking coat. Like motherfucker, like. Women asking me about the custody about their husband they coat. I'm like, mm-hmm. nigga, I'm like, damn, that's, that's a nice coat. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Shit like that. Like the shoes, all that shit. Like, nigga, you gotta dress in that bitch to look impressive. Mm-hmm. Like you can look impressive dressing down, like just wearing this shit like like right now, you know what I'm saying? I got this orange shirt on, got my off whites over there, all that shit. But you also gotta have shit in the closet, nigga, like that looks appealing. Like you look like you look like a grown ass man. You have yeah. to do that shit, bro. Yeah. You look like a grown ass man. Like even with the cologne, like I'm noticing niggas don't wear cologne like that. No, y'all just walk around smelling like weed. Weed, or they, or like, I'm seeing niggas going back to wearing Axe body spray and shit. I'm like, oh, y'all niggas is tripping. Shut the fuck up. Bullshit, you not. not. Niggas don't, niggas don't, niggas cologne game ain't shit, man. Like, 
Dog, that niggas need that niggas need starter kits. My body spray. Man, man, I just don't get it. Like nigga, like. Yeah, I will strange, say man. there's been a lot less effort put into, like, getting up and going out. And I just told myself, like, okay, over the weekend, this is your last weekend wearing comfort clothes out in public. That's it. You, no more fucking them bicycle shorts and, and fucking V-neck shirts. Those are my comfort zone. Like, just jeans and T-shirt, I'm not doing that shit no more. So, from now on, when I step out, I go somewhere I need to actually dress up. And that starts with not wearing fucking harachis with everything. Yeah, you know, and um, I'm about to grab, I'm about to, you know, shout to Taff. Uh, Taff, that's where I get a lot of my dress shoes from. Um, they like custom made. Uh, and they're very low key. They're very low key. They're from they're from Texas. They got some very low key stuff. Okay. I'm gonna get some of them. Um, I finally got my YSL shoes out of storage. Okay. The bitches been in storage. So you know what I'm saying? Like, it's like you just gotta. You gotta put something. You gotta, you gotta put some shit. Like, yeah, y'all niggas be saying put that shit on, nigga. Really put that shit on, dog. That's like, what we known for in this city. Yeah, really put that. Like, really, know. really put that shit on, dog. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's nothing wrong with wearing like, like, like say we go to Morris, nigga. I'm about to go in there with no, you know what I'm saying? Like, you, sometimes you just gotta dress up, man. You, yeah, you got you, 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 you gotta look the part, man. You know what I'm saying? Start. Nigga, you ain't gotta wear a suit and tie. No, I'm not. We're not saying that, nigga. Just dress, just dress appropriately. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's nothing wrong with having some slacks on or some shit like that. I'm never wearing jeans with. I'm never wearing jeans with hard bottoms. That's that's the fucking cardinal sin. I'll never do that. YG shit. set up. You don't like that shit. Track pants with the hard bottoms. Yeah, I can't do that, man. That, that's, that's, <laughs> That's his style, dog. I, I can't do that shit, man. But that shit look crazy. That's his style, man. But you know, you just gotta do shit like that, man. Just you be wondering why you be wondering why you be tracking all the little young bitches all the time and shit, man. Because you like you looking, you dressing like a young ass nigga with gray hair all in your head, man. Yeah, that checks out. Yeah, hey, so so girls wear some heels. Niggas wear niggas wear more fucking hard bottoms. Niggas dress appropriately for this shit, man. <laughs> it's equal. It's equal. It's, it's equal criticism for real. Right. This thing is that equal criticism. God damn right. But I think that's that, very true. That should be it, right? We that's it. Yeah, the rest of the shit we ain't really gotta Yeah, we ain't really gotta touch on it, man. Um yeah. it is what it is. Great episode. Always. Great episode, yeah. Um Reggie will be back next week. I'm gonna try to get Ken on here so he can make his introduction and shit. You know what I'm saying? Tell him what has happened as far as this Biden shit by the time. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? Boy, it's we living in a world right now, man. I'm gonna try and stay off social media for the rest of the time. Man, I'm about to go home and cook. I'm about to, I'm about to go home and cook and go to, and go to sleep. That's it. Check. I'm about to uh, check. I got some work. I got a lot of work to do this week anyway. Um, get to it and everything. Uh, shout out to Markel too, by the way. Yeah, you got to shout him out. Hey, um, Markel. Yeah, shout him. I actually want. You know what? You want to bring him back on here? Yeah, he's fun. Yeah, we, yeah. Is it to Markel? Uh, well, when you hear this, you probably already gonna know what day to come on here. But yeah, man, how you come on through as well, man. I ain't seen you know, seen bro in a minute, man. Anyway, man, that's my dog, man, for real. Um. So yeah, man. Shit, we'll see y'all next week, man. We actually gonna have camera back too. And um, also too, before we go, a lot of people have been on my ass about MQ at the dark. And I'm gonna make an announcement on the Patreon. Let everybody know what's going on to let them know like it's been a lot of changes that was going on and shit. But we are bringing it back. And I'm gonna hit y'all. I'm gonna hit y'all with something. I'm gonna hit y'all with something to to satisfy that, man. So um. Be on the lookout for that. We probably gonna do like an album, probably gonna do like an album breakdown or some shit like that. We'll get some people involved in that. So um Yeah, we're we gonna get it together, man. So you know what? That's exactly what I'm gonna do. So yeah, man. Um salute to y'all, man. Appreciate all the new listeners who've been tapping in and all this other stuff too, man. So we appreciate y'all definitely, man. We will see y'all next week. We're gonna bring back some more excitement, uh, bring the video back and everything. So let's get to it, man. We'll see y'all next week now. Bye.